The Duramax, Cummins, and Power Stroke engines are marvels of modern engineering. So why would those diesel engines need to cool the gases in their EGR systems? Let's take a look next. This video is sponsored by Blue Streak. Visit standardbluestreak.com to learn more. Exhaust gas recirculation was once only a gasoline engine concern, but with tighter emissions, diesel engines started to use this method to control combustion chamber temperatures and the production of nitrogen oxides. Compared to gasoline engines, the average exhaust gas temperature of a diesel engine is higher. So to make an EGR system work on a diesel, the temperature of the gases must be reduced for the life of the EGR valve and for the chemistry in the combustion chamber to work. This is the job of the EGR cooler. The EGR cooler is a heat exchanger with exhaust gases on one side and engine coolant on the other. Inside the cooler are tubes and fins for the coolant to increase the surface area and improve thermal transfer to the exhaust gases traveling through the cooler. Seems simple enough, right? Well, unfortunately, an EGR cooler can become blocked with carbon and soot from the exhaust gases. When this happens, the cooler may not flow the same and the deposits will prevent the transfer of heat in the exhaust gases to the engine. Late model diesel engines may have a sensor to measure the temperatures of the exhaust gases coming out of the EGR cooler. The PCM will compare these readings from the exhaust gas temperature sensors in the exhaust system, and these readings can tell the PCM if the cooler is doing its job. If the numbers don't add up, a code will be set. Often, an EGR cooler can develop an internal leak, and coolant can escape into the EGR passage and enter the engine. During initial diagnostics, the symptoms will mimic a leaking head gasket with white smoke and combustion gases in the coolant. But before you make the call on a head gasket, inspect the cooler. On some engines, it's possible to confirm a leak by actuating the EGR bypass valve with a scan tool to see if the presence of bubbles or exhaust gases in the coolant are reduced. Also, in the service information, there might be a procedure to isolate and test the cooler for leaks. I'm Doug Kaufman. Thanks for watching. <laughs>